。ただいまから第49回東京財団フォーラムを開催したいと思います。今回は少しいつもと違いまして、東京財団が3年前からパートナーシップを組んでおりますアメリカのあのシンクタンクでジャーマンマーシャルファンドというところがございます。でこの度。ジャーマン・マーシャル・ファンドと東京財団とそして外務省のご講演も得まして日米欧の3つの地域が今後どんなふうな協力をしていくべきなのかどうあるべきかという非常に大きなテーマで2日間にわたって親密に語り合うシンポジウムを開催いたしました。であのその細かな内容というのは、まあ、あの非公開型のシンポジウムのためあのお知らせすることがちょっと難しいんですが今日はそのディスカッションに参加なさった方々に登壇してもらいましてご自分の目を通してどんなふうに議論をお感じになったかそれを皆さんと共有したいと思っております。えー、開催ににあたりままししして、ず最初にジャャーーマンマンシャルファンドの理事長でいいらっしゃいます。クレイグ・ケネディさんから一言ご挨拶をいただきたいと思います。皆様同時通訳の今日入ってますのでこれをお使いになってください。一チャンネルが日本語、二が英語でございます。English is on the second channel. Well, thank you、uh, very much.、Um, I'll be very brief.、Um, German Marshall Fund is an American think tank, as,、uh, as was said、uh, earlier. That、um, was created to really promote cooperation between the United States and Europe. But over the last eight years,、um, in part because of the wonderful cooperation with the Tokyo Foundation, we've、uh, developed a very strong and、um, uh, robust program focused on Asia. We're particularly interested in Japan.、Um, we see this country as having、uh, both.、Uh, A very direct and strong connection to the United States, but also very important in a broader strategic and economic sense. I think that、uh, the trilateral forum that we had over the last two days confirmed the importance of bringing Europeans, Americans, and Japanese together to talk about both their common challenges and also common strategies for dealing with the future. Let me just close by saying thank you both to the panelists who uh, uh, generously agreed to give even more time to this project, but also to our partners at the、uh, Tokyo Foundation who have been、uh, really excellent in helping put this together. Thank you. それではあのその次に今度は東京財団側を代表いたしまして東京財団理事長の加藤秀樹よりご挨拶させていただきます、えー、皆さんこんにちは加藤でございますあのすいませんちょっと風邪をひいて声が出にくいんですけれどもあの私が初めて、えー、ケンディ理事長とお目にかかったのは4年ぐらい前だと思いますであのなかなかあ日本とアメリカさらにはそのヨーロッパの間でこう率直な意見交換をする場所っていうのはないんですねあのオフィシャルなものはそれなりにあるしかしやっぱりもっと日常的に率直に意見交換をしてお互いに相手をよく知るあるいは啓発し合うっていう場所をそういうものを作りたいと。いうあのケンディさんの非常に強い熱意を受けてじゃあぜひやりましょうとで、えー、それまでにすでにこの日本で、えー、少し小ぶりなあーミーティングをやったりあるいはあ日本からあこのジャーマン・マッシャル・ファンドにフェローを派遣したりという準備期間を経て今回の会議になりました。あの昨日の晩ご飯はとっても美味しかったって言ってその食事の内容を人に言ってもですね聞きたくもないよというかもしれませんがこの2日間の議論というのは非常に私自身どう言えばいいんでしょうかね非常にこう中身の濃い議論だったと思います。あのこれ自体はまあ非公開であるから皆さん率直に議論できるということだと思いますですからまあ本当はこういうことをもっとオープンにという面もあるんですけれどもやっぱり非公開のいいところ
で今からはある意味ではそれのエッセンスのこの一番こう上積みの部分を主なスピーカーに残っていただいて話をしていただくことにいたしましたあの多分後で質疑の時間もあると思いますからあのぜひですねあの今日の5人のパネリストさんたちは皆さんこの2日間ずっとこの議論に加わってましたしたがってそれを全部踏まえての議論をここでしていただけると思いますあのぜひそのエッセンスを味わってみてくださいありがとうございますありがとうございました今2人の理事長からご説明させていただきましたとおりあの非常に大きなテーマでたくさんのことを話し合いましたあの地理的に考えると3つそれぞれ全く違う地域ということになりますが考えてみますと民主主義一つをとってもアラブの政変そして東アジアにはまだ独裁体制も残っていますそして台頭する中国は果たして民主国家になるのかとかですね共通して考えなくてはならないことがたくさんあるというところから議論が始まりました。民主主義の将来と題するトピックそして他にはえー、先日、日本が意味軸も体験することになりましたけれども、あ昨年ですねあの、災害救助における新しい在り方、昔であれば発生したところで解決しなくてはならなかった災害ですが、今のようにグローバル化し、そして市民と軍事、あるいは防衛体制と、組み合わせたフロンティアがあるんじゃないかということであの最近の動向とともに将来の在り方も話し合いましたまたヨーロッパは大変な深刻な金融危機に見舞われましたけれども一体そのガバナンスとして金融はどう見るべきかあるいはガバナンスというものをすべきではないのかでさらに地域とグローバルの安全保障問題そしてまだまだ続きます、えー、エネルギーの供給と持続可能性、えー、こんなにずっとエネルギーを消費したままで地球環境をやっていけるのかこれこそグローバルで考えなければどうにもならないテーマであると思います、えー、そして、えー、最後に、えー、経済成長国際競争力、えー、つまりあのフリートレードの中でどのように国際競争力を担保してそして経済成長を一国単位で成し遂げていくかそのあり方レジームはどうあるべきかというふうに大変後半に話し合いましたで今日はこの5人のパネリストの方にあの、まあ、それぞれあまり焦点を絞り込む必要はございませんのでご自分がご覧になって感じたことをそのままお話しいただきたいと思っております、えー、一番最初に細谷雄一慶応大学法学部教授にマイクを渡したいと思います細谷先生は東京財団が行っている政治外交検証プロジェクトというあの勉強会も主催していただいております細かな略歴はお手元の資料にございますので時間節約のために読み上げるのはやめにしたいと思いますじゃあ細谷先生お願いいたしますはいありがとうございます。ただいまご紹介をいただきました慶応義塾大学の細谷と申します。国際政治学を専門としております。えー、私はあの第一セッション民主主義の将来というセッションにあのパネリストとして参加をしまして、えー、こちらのセッションで議論したことを簡単に5分程度でご紹介をさせていただきます。まあ、と申しましても私あのその議論をしたメモを家に忘れてきてしまってですね。あの今あの、政府の中では議事録がないとこれ大変な政治的な問題になりますが、幸い私はあの政治家でも官僚でもなく学者ですから、あの記憶力に頼って、えー、特にあのその第一セッションだけではなくて、他のセッションにもその続けて議論をした問題について、3点のみにあの限定して、非常に印象に残った点についてご紹介したいと思います。えー、まず第1点目がアラブの春についての議論がございました中東の民主化という形で2010年末からとりわけ2011年昨年の1月2月からアラブ諸国中東で民主化が広がっていきましたそれ以前には中東アラブ諸国では民主化が果たして可能なのかどうかとイスラム諸国に民主化が可能なのかどうかということでいろいろな学問的な議論もございました
まあ、しかしながら結果として非常に速いスピードで民主主義が広がっていくということになったあわけでございます、えー、その非常に速いスピードで広がっていったことに対してさまざまな議論がされましたが一つは、えー、結局このアラブの春というのはそれ以前の政権を打倒するそれ以前の政権を打倒するということは中東もそれ以前から繰り返し歴史の中で起きていたわけでございます。果たしてそれをアラブの春と呼んでしまうと、春という言葉の中には、これから暖かい花が咲く幸せな季節が来る、そういった期待感、希望があるわけでございますが、そのような価値観、希望というものがどの程度、その、えー、打倒するのかと。いうことについての議論もございました。つまりこれからの中東というものが、民主化というものがどのような方向に行くかということについては、依然として不透明であり、そしてこのアラブの春というものを、それ以前の政権の打倒という文脈で捉えたときに、どの程度これを民主化として民主主義が定着するかという、ことについては、さまざまな議論が可能であるということでございます。これが1点目でございます。2点目は、えー、中国の台頭という点でございます、つまりは新興国が台頭し、えー、従来あの、世界経済、世界の中心であった先進民主主義諸国が、えー、これからどうなっていくのか、えー、これからも先進民主主義国諸国が経済成長を続けることができるのか、あるいはこれ,これらの先進民主主義諸国、の経済成長が停滞する一方で中国のような、えー、非民主主義的な諸国が急速に台頭をするとすれば果たして経済成長を考えるときに民主主義というのがベストなモデルであるのかどうか、まあ、これについての議論がなされました日米欧、まあ、この日米欧フォーラムということでございますが日本もアメリカもヨーロッパもまさに先進民主主義諸国代表する国々でございます。したがって、これからの世界がどういう方向に行くのか、民主主義というものと経済成長をどういうふうに結びつけて考えたらいいのかということは、非常に大きな問題になってくるわけでございます。これが2点目でございます。そして最後3点目でございますが、3点目は、この日本とアメリカとヨーロッパが共に抱える問題でございます。先進民主主義諸国での病理、問題、行き詰まりということでございます。この先進民主主義諸国における問題、行き詰まりの最も重要な問題が、難しい決断ができなくなっている。例えば増税をする。あるいは TPP に参加をするということもそうでございます。それが果たして何が正しいか。とといいうことはいろいろな議論が可能かもしれませんしかし重要なのは今の民主主義諸国で、えー、難しい問題国民の間で議論が2つに分かれるそして、えー、政党の中でも与党の中でも大きく意見が分かれるこのような難しい問題に対して果たして今の民主主義諸国の政府は難しい決断が可能なのかどうかその中にはポピュリズムの問題がございますあるいは政治家が選挙や政局を優先するということもございます、えー、一方でイタリアやギリシャでは、えー、選挙で選ばれた首相が首相を辞任をしてそしてテクノクラートが政権を動かすということになるこういった新しい事態が起きてくるわけでございますこれらの問題はまさにこれから日本アメリカ EU ヨーロッパが抱える難しい問題であり民主主義というものがこれからも依然として最も優れたモデルあるのかどうかということは、えー、民主主義諸国がこれらの難しい問題を解決する能力があるのかどうかそしてそれとともに非民主主義諸国国と比べたときに民主主義諸国が経済成長を続け、人々を魅了するモデルであり続けるのかという問題に関わってくるんだろうと思います。以上でございます。ありがとうございました。それでは次にマイクをあの、えー、石井正文外務省総合、えー、外交政策局審議会にお渡ししたいと思います。えー、あのー、まさにその民主主義の議論が非常に大きかった。
のですがそのことが功を奏しましてその後のさまざまなトピックにやはりその問題はあの哲学的に関わってくるんだということが分かりまして、えー、非常に、えー、このセッションも盛り上がったあのその後のセッションも盛り上がったんですけれどもさまざまな国があってそれぞれにいろいろな内政の事情を抱えているときに、えー迫りくるいわゆるグローバルな脅威、えー、軍事的な危険に関してどんなふうに安全保障政策を、えー、構築していくべきかというこれまた非常に大きな議論が行われました、えー、そんな点を中心にあの石井大使にお話しいただきたいと思います、えー、ご略歴についてはあの同じようにこちらの紙をご覧いただければと思いますではお願いいたしますあの外務省の石井でございますあ今日わざわざおいていただきましてどうもありがとうございます私は役人なのであのメモをちゃんと書いてないといけないんですけどもあの自分が出たセッションはあの自,分自分に当てられた質問に対する答えを考えるのが大変でですねなかなか実はメモを取りにくいというのがございますがあの私の率直な印象をあの簡単にまとめて申し上げたいと思いますあのおそらくあの結論的には3つあったと思います一つはあのやっぱりあの一番この地域で安全保障を考える場合の大きな挑戦というのは対等する中国とどういうふうにうまく付き合っていくかと。いうことでしょうと、まあ、これはもう皆さんの共通認識であったと思います。で、中国のこれからの将来については、実はいろんな議論がありまして、もちろんこのまま安定して発展していくこともあるでしょうし、それはそれで非常にいいことだと思うんですが、一方、やはりあの日本とやっぱり民主主義という意味で体制が違うと、あのリーダーを選ぶための必ずしもしっかりしたシステムが、選挙というシステムがないということから、若干これがだんだん中長期的には、中国にとって厳しくなってくる可能性もあるのかなというような議論がございました要はあのあのてっぺんにいる人がなぜそこにいるのかというのを日本であれば選挙の結果だということで説明できるわけですが中国ではなかなかそれは難しいと、まあ、例えば明日が今日よりもいいのであればそれはそれでいいんでしょうけどもなかなかそれが難しくなってくると中国はこれからどうなっていくんだろうというような議論もありましたただまあ一つの,あのみんなの共通認識はそういう中国とどう付き合っていくのかというのが一番難しい問題だということでございます二つ目はあのアメリカの最近言われておりますピボットトゥーエイジアと言いましてアジアに関心を移してくると、まあ、これはいいことじゃないかとただ、まあ、あのどういう形になろうがやはりあの世界にある今脅威自身の質が変わってきているのでアメリカがいくら強くてもです、ね、1人で全部の問題を処理することはできないだろうとだからあのやはりアメリカは引き続きあの地域にアジア地域に関与してほしいんだけどもやっぱりみんなの助けが必要じゃないかと。いいうのが多分2つ目の結論であったと思いますで3つ目はまあ後でまた詳しくお話ししますけれどもあのそ,そういういろんな状況を考えると実はあまりあの今までヨーロッパの役割というのを僕らはここで議論したことないと思うんですけれどもヨーロッパの役割というのはこれからますます重要じゃないかと日米だけじゃなくて日米ヨーロッパで協力していくことが非常に重要じゃないかということでいろんな具体的な議論もございました。でその中であのあの出てきたなんとなくみんなの結論はですね、まあ、まあ当面はあのやっぱりあの今,のちょ今の選択日本の選択要するにあの日米同盟をあの背骨にして中国と握手をするというこういうあの選択がまあ引き続きしばらくは大丈夫じゃないかと妥当じゃないかというのがみんなの感じでございましたただ、まあ、あのやっぱり今までと同じような状況でやってるとまずいかなと。というのはやっぱり中国がどんどん上がってきてますしアメリカが1人でいろんなことができないということになるとですねやっぱり今までとちょっとやり方変えなきゃいけないんじゃないかというような議論がいくつかありましてそれをまあいくつかご紹介したいと思います一つ目にあった議論はやっぱりあのこれ日米同盟ってもうちょっと強化しなきゃいけないんじゃないのということでございましてあのこれイコール要はやっぱり日本もっとやらなきゃいけないんじゃないのってことなんですねでまあ,あのいくつか議論になったのはあの例えばあの武器技術、武器の輸出についても日本は最近新しい基準を作りましたとこういうふうなことを考えて日本が持っている強いところを生かしながら日米同盟を強化していくということがあるんじゃないかと例えば今後は ODA をどう使っていくかってそういうことも考えてもいいんじゃないかという議論が1つございました2つ目はですねあのネットワークの重要性これはあの今まではだいたい日米同盟だったり米韓同盟だったり米豪同盟だったりするアメリカが常に真ん中にいて二国間の同盟関係を作ってきたわけですがだんだんちょっとこれじゃ立ち行かなくなってきているなとそれよりもアメリカの同盟国の間例えば豪州と日本の間で安全保障関係を強くすればそれだけプラスじゃないかとこういうのを最近ネットワークと言っておるんですけどもこういうネットワークを作っていくことがますます重要じゃないかという議論がございました。でこののネットワークはもちろんあのアメリカの同盟国だけではなくて例えば日本と中国とアメリカの中で信頼を作っていくためのネットワークを作るのもいいんじゃないかとこういう議論がありましたこれは新しい話だと思いますで3つ目はですね日本の立場からすると
やっぱり弱い二国間関係を強くしなきゃいけないんじゃないかという議論がありました。これはあの、まあ、あのそれはやっぱり端的に言えば日本とロシアの関係ってまだ正常化されてないわけですのでこういうところをもうちょっと強くしたらいいんじゃないかともう一つ議論があったのは日本と韓国の間の2人とも日本も韓国両方ともアメリカの同盟国なわけですけれども日本と韓国の間の安全保障上の関係ってもうちょっと強くできないのかなといろいろ難しいことあるだろうけどもなんとかならないのかなという議論がありました、えー、あと2つだけ申し上げます4つ目はあのやっぱりこれだけあの中国でありインドであり新しい国が台頭してくるとこの地域でルールをどういうふうに作っていくかという問題を真剣に議論せざるを得ないよねという議論がありましたあの今まであるルールをそのまま守っているのは楽なんですけれどもやはり新しい国が来る以上いろんな形でそれを調整していく必要が出てくるわけですがそれをどんな形でどういう場所でやったらいいのかなという議論がひとしきりありましたこれは例えばあの東アジアサミットという会合が最近ありますけれどもそういうところをどう使っていくかとかそういう議論が若干ありましたで最後に5番目にありましたのはやっぱりそれはいろいろ言うけども結局中国と中国をちゃんとエンゲージって、まあ、関与していくっていうんでしょうか、中国をちゃんとしっかり中国と話して、中国と利益を共有してやっていくことがやっぱりこの地域の安定のためには重要なのかなと、でそのためには、まあ、あの日本と中国の間でもいろんな共通の利益があるわけですから、そういうことをもうちょっと具体的なプロジェクトにつなげていくとか、そういうことが大事なんじゃないかという議論がありました。だいたいそれで終わりなんですが、一つあの議論されなかったことで、あのちょっと問題的があったのは、今のようないろんなことを考えても結局、日本が先ほど細谷先生もおっしゃいましたがどういう決断をするのかと日本の国がこれからどういう形で生きていくのかというのは非常に大きな影響があるわけですがそこをあの実は外交の話安全保障の話を考えるときにその日本自身の選択というのはあまりあの論じられないんですけどもそこは実は結構重要なのかなという話がありましたそれについては必ずしも議論が深まったわけでは残念ながらありません。以上ですありがとうございましたそれではあの次にフォルカー・シュタンツェル大使にお願いしたいと思います、えー、中日ドイツ大使でいらっしゃいまして、えー、日本語も大変ご堪能そしてあのジャーマン・マーシャル・ファンドとのつながりも大変深い方でいらっしゃいましてあのご記憶でしょうか去年もあのご登壇いただいたことがございます、えー、今日のパネリストの中では主にヨーロッパからの視点についてあのお話しいただけるものと思いますでは大使よろしくお願いします Thank you, Ms. Imai.、Uh, and, um... Well, I have to apologize. I was not、uh, participating at any, any panel、uh, up to now, that is. So, nothing to report on, but maybe I can say a few words on、uh, things that might be discussed, especially concerning Europe in the future in this kind of trilateral forum.、Uh, I'm just returning from giving a talk on、uh, Europe, actually, at the FEC. And at the end of the question and answer session, I asked、uh, the audience,、uh, as I'm now going to the trilateral forum, And we'll sit on a panel.、Uh, what could I say there? What would be topics to be discussed concerning Europe? And the range of topics I heard from the audience came,、uh, ranged from energy policy, meaning shifting from、uh, based mainly on traditional energies,、uh, energy sources such as oil and gas, or established ones like,、uh, like nuclear, to renewable energies.、Uh, immigration. Immigration being something that Europe is confronted with since a long, long time, and it may be a future、uh, point of discussion, very much an issue in the、uh, discussion in uh, Japan. Uh, then the aging of、uh, societies. Now, that is something that is、um, exceptional,、uh, for, true for both、uh, European countries, my own country, Germany,、uh, and for Japan. The reproduction rates are、uh, practically exactly the same. So, this is something. That、uh, should be on the agenda. The social system.、Uh, how are we adapting to the aging of our societies in terms of how to take care of the elderly and those who need special care and special attendance? Then, resource nationalism, global resource nationalism. We need natural resources for our economies in order to remain uh, uh, strong, uh, countries that are strong in exports. But confronted with this kind of resource nationalism that we see and that Japan has seen, of course, at the end of 2010, very clearly when the problem of the rare earths、uh, popped up, that is something that concerns European, that concerns、um, uh, Japanese. Then a free trade agreement, which is presently being、uh, discussed 
whether it is going to be negotiated from the end of this uh, year onward between the EU and Japan. Uh, this is the list I uh, brought back from my audience. As a, a foreign policy person, I would have added um, two topics. One is uh, China, China having an enormous, and its rise, having an enormous impact on Europe, not as much as on Japan, as we are not a direct neighbor, obviously, but something that impacts our own political foreign policy strategies enormously and will continue uh, to do so in the future. And secondly, Russia. Russia is a neighbor to us Europeans, it's a neighbor uh, to Japan, and it's the only country to which we both are neighbors. And it's a country which concerns, due to its size and the policies it's pursue, it pursues, concerns us uh, to a very high degree. So that would also be a topic to be discussed. Now. Uh, let me say one thing about the, especially about the free trade agreement. I mean, European countries are, just like Japan, medium-sized countries that depend to an enormous degree on the freedom of the global markets. We need freedom of global markets for our future prosperity. This is endangered. And as we <coughs> won't see a Doha round, free trade agreement are seemingly the only way out for us. Now we are presently, as I said, exploring between Europeans and uh, Japanese the possibility of negotiating a free trade agreement. I think this should be very much a point of discussion between the two of us. Now, you have discussed free trade uh, today in the last session I see uh, from, from this uh, paper I got, but there's mentioning of the TPP. There's being made no mention at all uh, of the possibility, very close uh, possibility actually, of a free trade agreement between Japan and the largest market uh, of 500, more than 500 million inhabitants in the world, which is the EU. So I think there is a deficit in topics concerning both Europeans and Japanese. So if we continue this kind of trilateral forum, my suggestion would be to examine whether there are not topics that, just as they might concern Japan and the US, or Europe and the US, in turn concern more than those other relationships, the relationship between Japan and Europe, to put three pillars under this uh, trilateral forum in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. え、フィリングさんは東京在来フォーラム初めてご登壇なんですけれども、え、ファイナンシャルタイムズのコラムニストでいらっしゃいます。そしてあの、アジア担当編集委員として非常に後半に日本中国だけではなくてですね、アフガ
um, on the on my particular panel. And I guess as Europe is, um, as many economists think, Europe will actually shrink this year. That was probably uh, no bad thing. Um, uh, no, I'm I'm very happy for everybody to talk to everybody, and I think they should. And so, um, Europeans. Um, uh, Japanese and Americans talking to one another is is fine and um, to be encouraged. Yet um, one couldn't help noticing that uh, you know because of this growth discussion that very important players uh, were not present. I mean the giant elephant in the room, or perhaps uh, given that I'm talking about China, the giant panda in the room um, uh, was very little discussed, and um, except in the context, interestingly, of security. So there's China as threat, but um, not much else. Um, and, you know, Brazil, India, the Middle East, uh, even Africa, which has been growing quite fast, actually, um, you know, hard, hardly got a look in. So I think that's worth, um, worth mentioning. Uh, the trade discussion, there were some very divergent uh, views on trade in general uh, and on the TPP um, specifically. Uh, I mean, views on both but let's stick to the TPP, went from the TPP is absolutely vital um, to the TPP is not very important, to the TPP is poisonous. Um, so there wasn't exactly sort of consensus um, as, to, um, you know, as to the validity of um, uh, a free trade agreement. I must say there was some very strong defense of it as well. Um, there wasn't very much discussion, I don't think, of the kind of popular view of free trade. Um, you know, economists have always have sort of had a faith that free trade necessarily means win-win uh, for everybody. And that's sort of been the faith by which, you know, WTO and, you know, everything sort of GATT and, you know, all the rest of it has sort of been, been um, built on. But I think, um, y you know, that, that's the, the popular um, uh, feelings about free trade are sort of much more complicated. You know, if you take the American view, for example, there's a growing view that free trade is actually a great challenge for the middle class and may be one of the reasons that the, that the American middle class is shrinking. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily a correct view, but I'm saying um, that is certainly the background against which um, uh, free trade is being discussed. Um, one very important delegate did pronounce uh, Doha uh, dead, or, or rather a little bit like Elvis, uh, dead but occasional sightings. Um, which I thought was a, an interesting <laughs> comment. Um, industrial policy we talked about. Um, somebody noted that protectionism is the dog that hasn't barked since the Lehman crisis, and that's very true. But of course, there, there have been kind of other, what you might call disguised forms of protectionism from the massive fiscal stimulus packages that we've seen in, I think, 47 countries it was mentioned, obviously, in Europe, America, China, um, Japan itself. Um, and countries haven't kind of quibbled about the um, big fiscal stimulus of other um, countries, but that's a sort of a form of protectionism or sort of positive. Um, uh, and, you know, behind that, of course, you've had Buy America campaigns, you've had Buy China campaigns, um, Buy European campaigns, de, you know, de facto, if not in law. But if you look at procurement in those um, areas, you'll see that, um, uh, you know, people tend to um, buy their own stuff. Um, Quantitative easing as well, is a, you could argue, is a sort of form of industrial policy. It's a sort of, a, you bring out the big guns, you print money, and whoever prints more um, uh, grows faster or has their currency depreciate more. You could argue that Japan has, in a sense, lost out uh, in that war because it's been a, uh, the Bank of Japan has been nervous about um, the side effects of, um, uh, of quantitative easing. Um, there was some discussion of the type of growth and what we mean when we talk about um, growth, um, but probably not enough in a sense. I mean, someone made the very interesting point that, for example, when we look at free trade and we see all these um, very complicated, really rather wonderful, in a sense, supply chains where little parts, components bounce around the world between different regions, between countries in the regions, you know, often ending up in a, um, a place where they're put together, you know, be it China, be it Germany, be it America, be it Japan, um, that nobody accounts for the carbon emissions in, in, those, um, in those transfers of those parts. So I don't think we measure growth um, particularly um, sensibly, and often the externalities are not measured. I think China is a very good example of that, where 
Chinese growth is not always um, what it seems. If you dig a hole and you fill it up again, well, that's GDP growth. Um, uh, GDP per capita, of course, is very important, especially in the uh, Japanese um, sense, because J Japan looks very bad if you just look at GDP in aggregate. But if you look at GDP per capita, it doesn't look nearly as bad um, as, on, uh, as on other measures. Um, the final point I'd just like to make, I guess the, 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 I'm always struck, but particularly maybe on this visit, about the, the gloominess in Japan, um, especially from Japanese delegates. Um, uh, somebody brought up a Keidanren report, which I think came out yesterday or a few days ago, um, basically saying that if Japan couldn't get its kind of political act together and get proper policies in place, then it would cease to be an advanced country in 20 or 30 years. I think it was 40 years, actually. But um, um, you could argue that maybe Japan needs that sense of crisis and that that will mean that that won't happen because it will do something about it. You could argue that this is kind of overly alarmist. But anyway, um, that gloomy view was there. And the last um, uh, point I'd like to make, which is also kind of a, a, a little bit gloomy and Japan-related, was something that I hadn't really thought about before, which was um, the subject of Iran came up a lot in the Japanese context. And basically the argument was that um, if um, Israel or America attacked Iran and disrupted uh, oil supplies from that country and perhaps from the Middle East more generally, then that could be a bigger shock to um, Japan in terms of its energy security than even the Fukushima uh, disaster of, uh, of last year. And I must admit that wasn't something that I'd quite sort of taken on board. So I thought that was a very um, interesting, rather provocative point. So I thought I'd share that with you. Thanks very much. どうもありがとうございました。えー、それではフレッド・ハヤツさんにお願いしたいと思います。あのハヤツさんは本当に何度もあのこの東京財団とジャマンマーシャルファンドで行っている、えー、三極対話あるいはバイラテラルな対話に参加してくださってますし、ご自身もワシントンポスト市の、えー、東京支局長として日本について大変よくご存知の方でいらっしゃいます。えー、全体ご参加されてどんなふうにあの何をファインディングスは何かということをちょっとお話しいただきたいと思います。Thank you, Imai san.、Um, and、uh, I apologize for coming to Japan and speaking in English.、Um, <coughs> the, o the only thing I can say is you know, if I tried in Japanese, I would owe you an even bigger apology. <coughs> so、uh, you'll have to forgive me. It's、uh, been a long time since I lived here.、Uh, I was,、uh, like Professor Hosoya, I was on the panel talking about democracy. And、uh, I was struck a little bit uh, uh, by the gloominess、uh, of some of the prognoses and the sense of、um, shared problems、uh, as opposed to shared accomplishments.、Um, and <clears throat> I think it's certainly true that, that、uh, s many of the issues that、uh, I pay a lot of attention to in Washington these days have their parallels. Both in Europe and in Japan.、Uh, for example, the concerns about inequality、um, that、uh, I think here are often associated with the Koizumi reforms、uh, have echoes,、uh, as you've seen, in the、uh, Occupy Wall Street movement in the United States uh, and uh, I think come out of a larger、uh, anxiety about whether globalization and technology. <laughs> inevitably、uh, are going to exacerbate inequality、uh, as a price of economic growth.、Um, I think we all share uh, the concerns, uh, as uh, Josoya san said, of political paralysis、uh, and specifically of、uh, whether politicians in our society are still capable of acting in the national interest. Uh, you know, I've been struck since I, I've been here.、Um, uh, in the United States, as you know, there's、uh, a sense of growing partisanship、um, and of difficulties of Republicans and Democrats working together and, <coughs>、uh, with a couple of famous examples. Of, for example,、uh, Senator Mitch McConnell, who's the Republican minority leader in the Senate. Saying、uh, two years ago that his primary goal 
was to make sure that Obama did not win re-election. Uh, or uh, Romney, who's going to be the Republican candidate, having supported a certain kind of health reform, which is very similar to the health reform that Obama enacted, and now being against it because Obama is for it. That's the perception. So I come here and I read about uh, how the Liberal Democratic Party was in favor of doubling the consumption tax, uh, and now uh, that the Democratic Party uh, has endorsed it is not so sure. And uh, I hear echoes uh, from the United States. And, uh, you know, I think Europe uh, has different but some parallel issues uh, in uh, the difficult times they're having with uh, Southern Europe versus Northern Europe. And uh, the feeling in Greece and Italy and Spain that uh, Germany has profited from, has, has had an advantage uh, from being able to sell to these Southern European countries and therefore owes something to try and get Europe back on track. Uh, whereas many Germans, I think, see it differently. Uh, the ambassador could tell us more, but wonder, well, why should we be paying for more generous pensions for Greeks than we ourselves can enjoy? Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of this, I think, is because we do all share some of the same demographic challenges. Uh, the aging population, uh, which is not as stark in the United States as it is here or in many European countries, but nonetheless uh, is a factor. Nonetheless, the ratio of working people to ret retirees is uh, going to get smaller. And uh, that just exacerbates a lot of political tensions of uh, how do we share across generations the burdens of taxation and government. Um, so with all that, that gloominess, I thought, uh, you know, I, it's important just to make a couple of maybe more um, cheerful points. Um, and one is I think we ought to all have more confidence uh, in the democratic system, uh, or systems, I should say, because uh, every democracy is different, uh, uh, and that's a good thing. Um, you know, I think what we share is principles of uh, rule of law and uh, somehow uh, allowing the people the power to choose and recall their leaders. Uh, and beyond that, there are a lot of ways to structure democracies. Um, but, you know, if you look at the history over the last 30 years uh, uh, since South Korea and the Philippines and Indonesia became democracies and then uh, Eastern Europe and uh, many countries of the former Soviet Republic, of the former Soviet Union, and then you see how, once again, this yearning for democracy and freedom uh, expressed itself uh, in Tunisia and then Egypt, uh, Bahrain, now Syria, and in Russia starting in December, how uh, you know, thousands of middle class Russians are saying that they're no longer going to be satisfied with a system that uh, promises them economic growth uh, in exchange for their acquiescence in corruption and autocracy. Um, you, you know, I, I think. Uh, it's useful for us to see how much of the rest of the world envies what we do have, uh, and it gives a greater responsibility on us to try and make it work, number one, uh, which is never easy, and to the extent we can to share uh, some of the lessons and experience that, that democracies, uh, more mature democracies have gained. So maybe that's ありがとうございました。えー、まあ確かにその日米をそれぞれにデモクラシーがかなり浸透していて私たちがその人々が権利を持っている人々が自分たちの声を発する手立てと声を持っているでだからこそいろいろな国を分かつほどの議論をしてもなかなか物事が決まらないというあの共通の悩みもあるのだなということを実感いたしました。えーここでですね、ちょっと予定と違う進行にしたいと思うんですが
これだけ大勢の皆様今日お越しになられまして今5人のお話を聞いてくださいましたのでちょっとここで皆様とのやり取りをしてみたいと思いますあのどうぞ、えー、今のお話を聞いての質問それからご自身のお考えコメントをあの自由にあのお手を挙げておっしゃっていただけないでしょうかでちょっと約束事を決めたいと思いますあのなるべく多くの方と、えー、このパネリストとのやり取りをしていただきたいと思いますのでお一人様も一発言は絶対2分以内できれば1分で<笑>お願いいたしますその代わりなるべくやり取りの中で考えを深めていくようにしたいと思います実はそれが今回、えー、私たちがジャーマン・マーシャル・ファンドと行ったこの、えー、フォーラムの一つの特徴でもあるのでここでちょっとあの疑似的に再現できたらなというふうに思います。そういうふうにしてもよろしいですかパネルストの皆さんありがとうございますじゃあどうぞあの挙手をお願いいたしますマイクが参りますのでコメント質問あの何でも結構です大きなテーマでも小さなテーマでもいかがでしょう最初に恐れ入りますがお名前を、ね、とご所属お願いいたしますあ、高松と申します。えっ、ー、とコンサルタントとして、えっ、ー、と、あ、my name is Gosuke Takama. I'm doing internet related consulting. So,、uh, thank you for all the panel coming together today. I'm very appreciated.、Uh, um, I have a question about impact of the internet. Because seems like nobody touched about this issue because last year, United States Obama administration、uh, released、uh, international strategy for cyberspace, and France had EG8. The UK had London cyber, so it seems like those and the United States,、uh, European countries, and also Japan moving toward、um, how to deal with internet. So, if anyone of the panel h a v e、uh, any ideas or opinions, it will be appreciated. Thank you.最たる特徴の一つだと思いますあの特にその IT の専門ということではなくてあの議論のあり方として非常に大切な点をポイントしていただいたと思いますどなたかいかがでしょうかスタッチャー対象お願いいたします Yeah, thank you、um, Well,、uh, I grabbed the mic because maybe you、uh, haven't noticed that in Germany we have a new party in our system which are called the pirates Uh, now,、uh, they are not uh, attacking uh, ships, uh, but they are actually defending they defend the internet. They were founded a few years ago、uh, because of legislation prepared in Germany to control more of the internet, especially as far as child pornography is concerned. Now, the proponents who later、uh, founded the、uh, Pirate Party. Uh, took the position that the internet has to be free, completely free. Police can after pornographers just as they do it when pornography appears in print. But to allow the internet to be controlled by the government opens the door to many more controls over free citizens using this new medium. Now, that in itself might sound like、uh, something that pops up. And disappears. However, at the first state elections that we had in Germany, they surmounted the 5% barrier and got into the local government of Berlin.、Uh, the same happened or is about to happen now in various、uh, state elections. And on a, local, uh, on a uh, national level, this party now has support of 11% of、uh, the voters. Which I think goes to show what an impact the, inter- the existence of the internet has upon even ordinary people in、uh, a, a country such as Germany, just a normal industrialized society. People have become used not only to this instrument of the internet, but also to the freedom of, this internet, of the internet. And that, I think, if this is any indication of what's happening with this new party, Uh, goes to show that I think this question of control, what kind of control, is going to be, w- be with us for a long time. Thank you. 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 Thank
ということが一つ議論になったと思います。でこの点ではあの多分ヨーロッパと非常に一緒にやれる部分が大きいのかなという気がします。あのあの今日本もメンバーに入ってこの夏から国連を中心にルール作りが始まるんですけれどもそのベースになっているのはおそらくあのヨ,ヨーロッパ EU が今作ろうとしているルールなんですねだからそこをどうしていくかっていうあのあの日本とアメリカとヨーロッパで一緒にできる分野の一つとしてそういうあのサイバーの話が一つありましたもう一つのインターネットの話は、えー、あの地震の関係なんですあの要するにですねあのいかにしてで情報を伝達するのがいいのかっていう話なんですね。そのあの地震の時にそのあの政府の情報の出し方が正しかったのか、同じようなことが次に起こったらどういうやり方ができるのか、そういう時にソーシャルメディアってのはどういうふうに使うべきなのかという議論がありました。これはあの必ずしも結論はなかったんですけども、あのあの政府としていろんなことか。隠そうとしてるわけじゃないんですが、いずれにしても隠そうとしても隠せれる状況じゃないので、現場に行くといろんなものがすぐ映ってばっと発信されるという時代なものですから、そういう中で政府はどういう形で情報を発信していったらいいのかという議論が一当たりありました。Thank you very much.、Uh, well, I hesitate to talk about the internet since I can barely use it, but,、um, but there was one,、uh, one point I guess I wanted to make. I,、uh, I was on a panel、uh, a few weeks ago. And with、uh, Neil Ferguson, the economic historian,、um, who's a very bright man. And there was a, a comment he made that was, I just sort of found quite arresting, which he said, you know, the next war will not be fought you know, on, the, on the high seas, it will be fought in cyberspace,、um, which、uh, raises you know, quite a few questions. I mean, whether or not that's true,、um, it probably isn't in the stark terms that he presented it, but,、um, but it leads you to kind of some interesting、um, thinking. I mean, I think we're used to thinking of power, the projection of power in sort of traditional military terms, and we equate that with the size of the economy. So, I mean, in broad terms, you know, if you have a big economy, you can have a big navy, a big air force,、um, et cetera. This is the rise and fall of nations, the Paul Kennedy、um, view. And, and naturally, we, we look at China then and the, its ability, growing ability、um, to spend, and that's a valid. Um, a valid discussion, no doubt, and also America's and Japan's decreasing ability to, to spend.、Um, but、uh, the, the cyber warfare, I suppose, brings up the possibility of complete sort of asymmetric、um, shocks to the, to the system.、Um, you just need somebody very clever from whatever country to you know, possibly wreak all sorts of,、um, of damage. And I suppose that this is an area. Uh, where you, you could say that、um, you know, Europe, Japan, and the US, I mean, this is sort of prime territory.、Um, not only are they obviously all very technologically sophisticated countries, but they, that this is where, and I'm sometimes skeptical of sort of talking about democracies sticking together and whatever, but this is where one could argue that you know, the, the fact that they're democracies is, is quite interesting because. They may be better able to draw the lines as to you know, what is permissible, how to defend um, um, cyberspace um, without um, transgressing um, certain freedoms.、Uh, th and they would seem to be、um, three, three air regions、um, that could usefully、uh, discuss such a topic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 星田先生、何かちょっと一言言っていただけたらなと思うんですが、なぜかと言いますと、あのその民主主義だからというわけではないんだけれども、そのサイバースペースのガバナンスのあり方とか、えー、考えること。機会があるしその危険を回避する方法もあるんじゃないかというご指摘なんですけれどもその最初の主担者大使の話もありましたようにそもそもあれはガバナンスガバナンスがあるべきものなのか政府が何かすべきものなのかあるいは何かしなくちゃどうにもならないじゃないかというその辺の,あの民主主義と入っていいみたいなことを一言いただけないでしょうか。あ,ありがとうございます、えーとまあ、私は政治学が専門なんですが、政治学の世界でも、あのこの中にもあのいらっしゃるかもしれませんが、学会でここ数年、あのインターネットガバナンスの問題、インターネット問題が急速にあの広がっています、あの言うまでもなく一つの景気は、先ほど申し上げたようなアラブの春ですね、おそらくインターネットの問題と、あとはソーシャルネットワークの問題、これ、両方を。考えなければならない問題だと思うんですが、えー、インターネットガバナンス、インターネットをどうやってガバンしていくかという問題と、一方でソーシャルネットワークが広がって
、えー、従来とは明らかに民意や世論というものが変わってきている、まあ、従来の世論というものはああの例えばファイナンシャル・タイムズであるとかワシントン・ポストのような超一流の,あの高級紙があのその非常に大きな影響力を持っていたのだと思いますしかしながら明らかにそのこういったクオリティペーパーとインターネットの中での議論にはギャップがある。まあ、例えばインターネットの中では匿名で非常にナショナリスティックで攻撃的な議論が出てくることもございます。そうすると従来とまず政府はこの2つの世論、つまりはクオリティペーパーが作っている従来と同じようなトラディショナルな世論と、もう一方で新しく台頭し、非常に影響力が大きくなっているインターネットでの世論。この2つの問題をどう受け止めるか、あるいはどういうふうに戦略的にコミュニケーションを作っていくかというような難しいその問題に政府は直面していると、そして先ほど申し上げたように民主主義、民意というのは一体何なのかと。まあ、政府の,その政治家を選ぶ投票、エレクションもあれば、さまざまなところに今申し上げたようなパブリックオピニオンもあると、そしてそことのコミュニケーションの問題も出てくると、そうすると、明らかに政府の側で従来とはその対応を変えなければならなくなってくるんだと思います、一方、これがおそらくそのサイバースペース、これ、安全保障でも先ほど、石井大使がおっしゃったような、サイバースペースの安全をどう守るか。という問題そしてどういうふうにあのそこに秩序を作っていくかという問題つまりはあの海あのそのマリタイムオーダーであるとかあるいはスペースオーダー宇宙のオーダーであるとかあるいは、えー、そのとそのランド大陸での秩序いろいろな秩序がありますがそこにサイバースペースの問題がかかってきてきその秩序をどう作り、そこでどう統治を行い、そこでの世論をどうするかという問題が出てくる、これはあの実は自民党政権に比べて民主党政権最初の1年、2年はかなり意識がひるひあのその下がってです、ね、首相官邸でもこれに対する議論というのは一時止まってました、それがようやく再開したわけですけれども、やはり予算の面でも、あるいは政府の活動の面、スタッフの数でも、イギリス、アメリカに比べると圧倒的に日本はあの弱い。もちろんそれに対して非常にお金とスタッフを使っているのは中国なわけです、そのスペースに対してどういうふうに取り組んでいくかというのはあのかなり大きな重要な問題だろうと思います、貴重なご質問ありがとうございました。ありがとうございましたペリさん If we raise the question of、um, you know, how do governments intervene、uh, in order to distinguish between you know, sort of the highbrow comment that you might read in the Wall Street Journal or the Financial Times versus the comment of everybody else, I would have one very quick answer. It should not,、um, you know, ideas, anonymous or not,、um, should fight it out.、Um, and、uh, you know, one, one Ameri- famous New York、um, columnist said he used to get up in the morning and see what. Um, his six competitors had written. You know, now he has to get up and see what his six million competitors have written. And I think you know, that surely、uh, you know, may cause some problems along the way, but、um, that's surely better. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you more than one round. I'm going to ask you more than one round. Yes, good afternoon.、Um, my name is Wang. I'm from the Chinese Embassy.、Uh, it's very interesting to take part in this uh, important uh, uh, panel discussion. And uh, sure, I, I mean, in terms of uh, economics, uh, uh, European and Japan and the United States are all close partners with China. So I think、uh, if we keep,、uh, at least we keep the good、uh, relations in this term, we have very potential、uh, space to further develop our.、Uh, Relations.、Uh, as for the、uh, views、uh, expressed by the panelists, I, I would like to make three observations. First,、uh, regarding、uh, Professor Hosoya's、uh, points regarding democracy.、Uh, yes,、uh, P- Professor Hosoya mentioned that、uh, in the Middle East, now you have the Arabic uh, uh, Spring. But、uh, yes, Professor uh, mentioned that uh, it's, it's a season. So, we are we going to see the, 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 the summer of、uh, Arab? Or, or winter of Arab. So it, it, it's a problem. I think no one in this audience will be sure that、uh, only the democracy, democracy itself will,、uh, will find a solution to those serious challenges by, by Middle East countries or the other developing countries, even like China. 
and all the professor also mentioned that uh, in all the major democracies now we face a kind of dilemma uh, that is to we have many challenges but uh, it's very difficult to make to make the important decisions uh, consider, considering this uh, very big uh, very big background y yeah so how how do you expect a country like China, who now facing so much challenges, to just uh, simply follow the democracy, such a word? Sure, I, I think democracy is great. And uh, the second, uh, second observation is, uh, is, uh, it's, is regarding the, uh, 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 China itself. Uh, I think uh, China now, now it's in 21st century. China is very different from China uh, was in 1970s, 60s. It's so different. So, uh, so I think it's it's very natural. Country, many countries has the potential to uh, to evolve itself, to find uh, to explore its own uh, ways and approach uh, to make progress. So I think uh, for big countries like China, I think uh, not only for China, China, China ourselves, but also for the outsiders. I think people. I think a kind of uh, patience is so impo such an important thing. So don't uh, underestimate the, p the potentials for uh, people, for society to evolve itself. The third is uh, regarding the externality of the so-called Chinese rising. What, one point I want to make is uh, first, don't, don't over, overstate the, the rising of China. When you look at the uh, Fortune 500, you know, not so many Chinese uh, industries in, is in, that, in those uh, competitive sectors. So that's a very uh, evident uh, uh, element. Uh, and although you know, w many people are worrying about uh, the uh, future behavior of China, I think uh, for, 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 for foreign policy or foreign strategy of a country, it's not so much decided by the, uh, by the democracy or non-democracy. So this is the reason why we see Afghanistan war or Iraq war that means okay. in those cases, okay. Thank you. the democracy Thank itself you does not, yeah. I'm sorry, just, uh, yeah. Okay. The democracy itself does not uh, influence, or does not uh, ch uh, check its, uh, its, its foreign behavior. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Domo. どうもありがとうございました。さあ、あの大きなエレファントという話がありましたけれども、イメージクも、えー、あの随分あの、ね、はっきりとしたご意見三つポイントありました。パネリストの方ぜひご意見を伺いたいです。どなたから参りましょう。Thank you. I, I saw you, but I didn't change the line of remarks anyway. So I, I, I think uh, I, I was encouraged by your remark, particularly when you said about the don't underestimate your, your ability to change. That's great. And uh, I think after all, it's your choice. I, I, think I, made a, I think I made that quite clear. It's your choice. And uh, you, you have to make your own choice. We have to make our own choice. But we are neighbors. We have to live happily and prosperously together. But uh, you know, we are good friends. We, we've been living in that nature for the past 2,000 years, I suppose. So we know how to do it. So it's up to your choice. But I think we have to live together. That, that's the bottom line. Thank you. Let's go ahead and go ahead and go ahead. Let's go ahead and go Thank you, um, and thank you for your comment. Um, I just wanted to respond to a couple Two things you said. Uh, one about the war in Afghanistan, uh, I did not understand. Uh, the United States uh, is fighting with many European allies and others in Afghanistan because Congress approves money for it every year. Uh, Congress is elected by the people. If the American people did not support the war in Afghanistan, the war in Afghanistan would very quickly come to an end. So I don't, I'm not sure what you mean by a disconnect between democracy and foreign policy. Um, the other thing more generally is, is uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm an editorial writer at the Washington Post, and um, sometimes uh, we write editorials uh, about China that, uh, that your counterparts in the embassy in Washington do not agree with. And, uh, sometimes uh, one of them calls me and says, the Chinese people are very disappointed with your editorial today. And I always say, well, how do you know? <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, my reaction is, uh, you know, I, I agree uh, the world should show patience uh, that China's development over the last 30 years 
uh, is astonishing, and never in history have so many people been brought out of poverty so quickly. Uh, and yet, on the other hand, uh, we see that when people inside China express a desire for democracy, uh, express a desire to have parties other than the Communist Party participate, they're put in jail or sent into exile. And so it seems to me uh, it's not a question of whether the outside world has patience or not, but why the Chinese people themselves uh, are not permitted to have a greater say in how the political system evolves. Question and I, uh, first of all, I strongly feel that uh, from the point of view of Japanese history, Japan could never attain uh, the rapid and the continuous economic growth after 1945 without democracy. I don't think that democracy is black and white, and uh, I do feel that China, current Chinese politics government has many, many democratic elements. So I don't think that uh, China should have a quite similar political system to US. China should uh, decide by themselves. And Chinese politics should be developed by Chinese people. Surrounding countries should not criticize China. But I do feel that if China wants to uh, maintain the current level of economic growth, I do feel that Chinese politics should enlarge the field area of democracy, even though it is not uh, regarded as, it will not be regarded as democracy, but I do feel that China should enlarge the uh, areas of democracy. This is because democracy closely relates to the legitimacy of the decision. And even though it's very slow for Japanese government to take a tough decision, all the decisions are more or less legitimate because this is supported by ordinary people's feeling or understanding. So I think that China should combine two things, the effectiveness to continue the economic growth and also to enlarge the legitimacy of its decisions supported by majority of people. If China can combine two things, I think that China can continue the current level of economic, economic growth. And the, the, the maintaining of the current level of economic growth is a good thing to Japan as well. Uh, my name is Sadaki Numata. I'm a retired ambassador, but I also used to be the foreign ministry spokesman. So I'm going to ask a question about media and democracy. And I would like to take advantage of the fact that we have Mrs. Hyatt and Mrs., uh, Mr. Pili with us. Uh, one of the points that discussed so far is uh, the perceived political paralysis in the United States or in Japan and elsewhere. What role do the media have in this, I'm referring especially to the quality media like the Washington Post and the Financial Times. And uh, if you do perceive that uh, you do have a role to play, would you have any advice to your journalistic colleagues in Japan? So, um, it's a, a good question. Um, you know, the internet uh, has, for us, has been uh, both uh, disruptive and uh, productive. Uh, we have more readers than ever and less revenue than ever. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a dangerous combination over time. Uh, hopefully, we'll figure the second one out uh, while the first one still lasts. Um, I think the relationship to the partisanship and paralysis um, is uh, that uh, increasingly um, there's uh, a fracturing and people are able to find only if they choose, they can f listen only to the views they know they're going to agree with 
and read only the views they know they're going to agree with. Uh, now, you know, I think it always used to be true that most liberals just read the liberal columnists on the Washington Post and the conservatives read the conservatives, but they couldn't help bumping into a view of somebody else from time to time. Um, now, if you choose not to, uh, you can listen only to Fox and, or you can listen only to M MSNBC. And um, so I, I think if you talk to most politicians in Washington, they would say this has, uh, among many other factors, uh, exacerbated the difficulty of uh, trying to find compromise and reach across the aisle. Um, you know, I, in terms of, I, I don't have advice. Uh, the, the, the policy of the Washington Post editorial page is that um, uh, there are men and women of goodwill on both sides, and we'll look for, for uh, issues, for positions that make sense on both sides and encourage people to compromise in the national interest. Um, so far, we're not having a lot of influence, but I, I think in the next week or two, maybe things will look up. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's a, very, it's a very difficult question. I don't think I can add uh, too much. Uh, I, I certainly would never deign to give um, advice. I, I really got, I suppose, two two points. Um, one is that I'm, oft, I'm quite often asked, um, uh, what is the FT's line on, you know, TPP, Iran war, you know, whatever. Uh, and my answer is always, quite honestly, we don't have a line. Um, I mean, we do have editorial pages, but uh, uh, I mean, a uh, shasetsu, as, as uh, you would call it in Japanese. Um, but uh, I can assure you, there's no sort of conspiracy. And having written some of those myself, they uh, they can be written there, you know, very much on the hoof and certain, and without kind of a great debate within the paper. Um, but more interestingly, really, if you look at our uh, op-ed pages. Um, which is where we have both internal columnists and external um, contributors. There is a real conversation going on there. Um, that's true of some papers. It's, it's not true of all papers. Some papers certainly have a kind of a line. And I think that is a disservice, um, especially um, uh, uh, given what Mr. Hyatt says about, um, uh, about this kind of fracturing of opinion and people being able to go to where they want. So if you have things all gathered in one place where you hope there's a reasonable chance of people reading, you know, more than one piece, then to have a kind of a, um, you know, to have more than one view, even opposing views, um, uh, I think um, can be very valuable. Uh, the other, I suppose, service that um, a newspaper, in fact I'm banned from calling it a newspaper, I meant to call it a news organization um, because of course you can read us however you like uh, on your iPhone or uh, on your computer or on old-fashioned paper. But um, um, the other thing that we, can, uh, that we can do or that we can try to do um, is just to kind of step, step back a bit and present, you know, cool, clear-headed um, information and you know, um, news organizations that get too sucked into um, sort of bandying around, you know, partisan points, not really examining whether things that politicians, um, you know, or bureaucrats or academics say are actually true. And um, there's an awful lot of information, you know, such and such and such, he said, um, with very little checking as to whether that may or may not be true. So, I mean, a kind of a, a, a cool headed. Uh, refereeing, I guess, um, and an attention to, um, you know, facts and fact-checking, um, which actually American papers tend to do very well, um, uh, I think is obviously something that, uh, that one could advise any journalist to do without, uh, without you know, uh, without seeming to be too arrogant. So that would be it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Just a comment from uh, consumer not a maker of news, and uh, <coughs> somebody who likes to discuss his job and other problems like the ones just mentioned by David uh, with uh, friends and others. You know, if, in, uh, if I return home to Germany, I take a, a rent a car and I switch on the car radio, and it takes me a while, a lot of stops at uh, red lights until I find one station where I think that is worthwhile listening to. I go to a kiosk, and I look at the uh, enormous amount of printed material, 
And I think, what should I buy? And in the end, I look into some of these magazines and I don't end up don't buying anything, not buying anything. Uh, and it's the same when I uh, get uh, to my apartment and watch uh, TV. You know, here in Japan, I've subscribed to a, a service which allows me to record uh, um, TV station, TV programs from back home. At best, it's one per week that I find is worthwhile recording and watching later on. Now, in Japan, okay, there's Asahi Shimbun, there's Yomiyuri Shimbun, but if you go by the subway, you see what people are reading. If you go by the subway, you see what the Shukanshi uh, are reporting about. If I tell my wife we have a lot of time tonight, let's watch TV, then after uh, zapping a lot, I end up by telling her the six o'clock news in the morning are very good actually, uh, on NHK that is. And if I'm in the US, I think I stop talking here, describing uh, what's, what's going on in the US. So what I, I think we all have come to realize, have to come to realize is that there is an enormous gap between uh, media that you have been wanting to talk about, which are only for a slim, slim minority in any democratic country, and the st kind of stuff that a large, large majority people are reading or watching. But the large, large majority is deciding elections and are actually political animals as well. But how are they being informed? informed? Where is the sense of responsibility of the media uh, enterprises? Thank you. どうもありがとうございました。あ,あの非常に理想的な感じでフリーディスカッションが進んで、これぞあの本当にフォーラムの醍醐味だと思っていますが、あと15分となってしまいました。ここでですね、あの2つ目のあのラウンドで、えー、コメントをいただきたいと思っています。えー、少し日米欧のあり方みたいなことに戻りたいと思います。大きな話に戻りたいと思います。えー、パネリストの皆さんに伺います。まあ、今お話ししてきましたようにその世界が非常にああのものすごいスピードでグローバル化してインターコネクテッドになっていてそして共通の課題もたくさんあるで価値観も多様化しているそういう国際情勢の中で日本、アメリカそしてヨーロッパは引き続きあの有力な世界のプレイヤーに。なり得ていると思うわけですけれどもこの3局でもってその安定的で開かれた国際秩序民主的な国際秩序というものをその健全に醸成していく健全に進めていくそのためにその日米欧というのはどういう役割をこれから担えるのかあるいはどういう協力の在り方があるんだろうか協力の在り方なのかはないんだろうかそういった点についてあの自由にコメントをいただきたいと思います。お一人3分ぐららいいででかがでしょうどちらから、細谷先生からいきましょうか、お願いします、はい、ありがとうございます、えーとあのー、おそらく、あのー、これから非常に難しい時代になっていくんだと思います。と申しますのは、あのこれは国際政治学、理論の世界で一言申し上げると、基本的にはあのー、国際秩序が作られるというのは、あの世界戦争の後ですこれはあのナポレオン戦争の後の部員会議、あるいはあの第二次世界大戦後に新しいさまざまな秩序ができるということですね、戦争中、あるいは戦後ということです、えつまり人類があの近代の世界の中で、世界戦争がない時代に新しい秩序を作っていくということは、非常に難しい問題だと思うんです。えつまり今ある秩序というのは基本的にはアメリカとイギリスが中心となってそ,そしてそこにソ連が加わって、えー、1941年から1945年、6年の間に作られたものです、えー、この秩序というものが明らかに今あ、台頭しつつある国々例えば中国やインドにとってあるいは敗戦国であった日本やドイツにとってさまざまなこれから修正が必要になってくるかもしれないこれは国連においてもそうかもしれません安保理の改革ということですそれをどういうふうに平和な時代にしかも民主主義的つまりは数百ある国ですね200もある国々でどうやって問題をこれを解決していくのかということですそれに対して一言最後に私が申し上げたいのはおそらく
あの3つのレベルで解決するべきなんだろうと、第1のレベルが G7 です、つまりはまさにこれは日米欧でコンセンサスを作り、これからどういう秩序を作りたいのか、ルールを作りたいのかということで、日米欧でコンセンサス合意がなければ、えー、コアというものが作られない。その日米欧で考えた G7 で考えた G8 で考えたさまざまなその合意というものをもとにそれをベーススターティングポイントとして例えば中国であるとかインドであるとかブラジルであるとかエマージングパワーズがそこに入ってくるということですそして2番目のレイヤーがレベルが G20 ですねおそらく新興国も含めてそこに例えばトルコであるとかもちろん韓国やインドネシア、こういった国々が加わって、いわゆる世界の主要国です、えー、広い意味での主要国が新しい秩序のデザインをするということ、これは当然ながら必要になってくるということになる、そしてもう一つが国連総会のような、あるいはそれ以外の COP、あの気候変動の問題もそうです、より広い加盟国間でさまざまな議論をする、もしもその広い加盟国間でゼロから、あのそのそのベルゼロベースで作ってたらとてもじゃないけども合意というのは作れないと思うんです、もしもそれが日米欧で合意したものをベースにしてさらにそれに中国、インドなどの諸国が、えー、大幅に、えー、了解できるものであれば比較的スムーズにそれが世界全体に広がるかもしれません、この3つのレベルでのガバナンスというものが今後、必要になってくるんだろうと思います。ありがとうございいますあの今細谷先生からいろあの非常に整理されたお返事がありましたので私はちょっといくつか具体的なことを申し上げたいと思います。一つはやはりあのなんて言うんでしょうグローバルパワー大きな国との関係をいかにうまくやっていくかに際してやはり日米欧の間の協力とか調整というのは重要になると大きな国というのはやっぱりそれは具体的に言うと中国でありロシアこの国との関係をどうやっていくかにおいて日米欧で常に考え方をすり合わせながらやっていくというのが、実はこれからの平和と安定のためには重要じゃないかと思います。あの今回の,あのユーロの危機、ございましたけれどもあの、これもちろん大変なわけですが、それを見てて、やっぱり私ども思いましたのは、あのヨーロッパの中国経済に対する影響力というのは、これだけ強くなっているんだということです、やっぱりユーロ危機になると、中国はやっぱりあのヨーロッパとの貿易関係、相当強いですから、やっぱりそのユーロ危機というのは、中国の経済にも非常に大きな影響がある、でそれはあのヨーロッパ側も今回、非常によく気づかれたんだろうと思います。ですからそういうい問題を見てもアアジアとヨーロッパの関係というのは実は相当あのここで感じるよりもずっと近くなっているのかなという気がいたします、ロシアは先ほど話しまありましたように、アジアもあればあのヨーロッパもあるという国でございますので、例えば具体的な例でいうと、ミサイル防衛、今あの、ヨーロッパのサ,サイドではその、ヨーロッパの方にですに、ね、ミサイル防衛をあの導入するというのに対して、ロシアが反対をしていると、いろいろ今、協議が進んでおります、実は同じようなミサイル防衛のシステムというのは日本側にもあるわけです、でこれ、今回あの、北朝鮮の際に導入しましたけれども、まあ、こちらではとりあえず問題になってないということですね、これ、いいのかなと思ってるんですが、ただ、問題は将来的にあの日米で今、共同開発、生産に至るその非常に進んだ技術が、将来的に場合によってはヨーロッパ側のミサイル防衛に使われることがあるわけです、そういう意味であのあのロシアをめぐる議論というのは、あの日本、アジアとヨーロッパなどでは相当共通点があるということでございます。二つ目のカテゴリーはおそらくあのあのもうすでにいろいろ論じられましたので簡単に申し上げますとルール作りだったりその役割分担だったりということでございます、これ先ほど申し上げたようにサイバーの話、それから宇宙の話、これは日米欧で相当ルール作りを引っ張っていかなきゃいけないという側面があると思いますしもう一つだけ具体例を申し上げると多分、脆弱国家といわれる問題が今あります。これはあのあのアフリカなんかで,です、ねあのまあ、アラブの春にも若干関係あるんですけども一旦秩序が壊れて弱い政府を持っている国がたくさん出てきているわけです、でこれをほっとくとしばらく経つとこうあのアフガニスタンから出ていったような人たちがスーッと入ってきて実はアフガニスタンでテロリストの相当に成功してもアフリカで実はテロリストの。あのなんて言うんでしょうセーフヘイブになるような国がいくつかできちゃうという問題があるわけです、これ、一つの,あのそうなり得る例というのはおそらく南スーダン、新しく独立した南スーダンだと思いますが、こういうところに際して、例えば日本とヨーロッパは、例えば PKO であるとか ODA という形で、あのそうならないように安定化させていくということができると思います、でこれをやれば別にアメリカが関与しなくても大丈夫ということで、実はあの脆弱国家に早い段階で、
安定のために関与していくというのは日本とかヨーロッパがもっと役割を果たせる分野じゃないかと思います。こういういこともあってあのちょっと宣伝になりましたが、南スーダンにやっぱり自衛隊の方に前からで活躍されているということだと私は思います。最後、あのもう一つだけ具体的なことをもう一個申し上げると、えー、これ武器輸出三原則について新しい基準を作った結果、つい最近あのあのイギリスの首相がおいでになった時にあのちょっと新聞に出たんで、あのあの上に触れたかと思いますが、やっぱり今までは日本とアメリカの間で防衛協力、あの武器の開発とかやってきたわけですが、これを今後ヨーロッパの国ともやっていく可能性というのが。出てくるわけですであのこれは非常に新しいあの協,協力できる分野であの日本、アメリカ、ヨーロッパ3つの局でその防衛分野でのいろんな共同開発共同生産をやっていくというのが今後新しい協力分野としてあるんじゃないかと思います。I think this、uh, will fit nicely to what Mr. Ishii、uh, just has、uh, been saying, and I say it against the background of、uh, what I、uh, recognized before,、uh, which is that we have. Too little actual、uh, discussion of、uh, essential topics, essential issues between、uh, Europe and Japan. <coughs> Against this background,、uh, what I'm going to say is that, to quote you, David, the big elephants are in the room. What is the room? It's the globe. We all have benefited enormously from the presence of the big elephants. The rise of the rising powers. Has increased our own prosperity. Economically, we have benefited enormously. The more big elephants, the better. Politically, that is not the case. Due to the entrance of the elephants into the room, the world order has begun to gradually dissolve. We don't have a bipolar world anymore, obviously. We don't have the post Cold War unipolar. World. The multipolar world is dissolving into the G20 world, but what are the G20 actually affecting? What impact do they have? We do not have, or we have less and less of a world order that we all can rely on. And as long as the big elephants are not contributing to, the,、uh, to, to creating a new world order to, or to re establishing one that we had, what can we do? What can we rely on? The one thing, the one element that has come down to us from the past decades stability assured by Japan, the United States, and Europe. War in Europe is practically unthinkable. The transatlantic relationship is solid, and what NATO is、uh, doing, you can see in Afghanistan, is taking on responsibility for the working of this world. The same is true for Japan and the Japanese、uh, American relationship in East and Southeast Asia. Would the elephants have been able to come into the room? Would the rising powers have been able to rise at all if it were not for a world made stable and peaceful by those three pillars of the global order Europe, the United States, and Japan? This, I think, makes it clear how necessary it is. That these three, three continue to talk together strategically and to devise ways how to establish at least rules, the rules that Mr. Ishii just mentioned, for a variety of issues in a, world, in a world where we do not have an order that we can all refer to. Thank you. Um, I think you've raised some very interesting points. The transition between a world order that we kind of know, the post war、uh, world order, and one that we really、uh, we don't really know the,、uh, the shape of. And、uh, again, you know, with my、um, sort of cynical hat on,、um, you know, while I think it's very valuable for the, for, for the, for the three, for Europe,、um, uh, Japan, and America to talk,、uh, because why not?、Um, I think, you know, there are a few. Uh, potential sort of pitfalls.、Um, uh, you know, we, it, the danger is that it, it, is, it could be seen as a,、uh, an anti China club.、Um, you know, we're democratic,、uh, we're rich,、uh, we're not China.、Um, to throw something, I think, extremely, something that I haven't really thought out, which is very dangerous to、uh, be mentioning things I haven't really thought out in a public forum.、Um, but、um, the, the last sort of Transition of the world order was in was between Britain 
um, and America, in a sense, two culturally very similar um, countries. And there was something that you could call, um, if you wanted to use a provocative word, you could call it appeasement. Now, appeasement is obviously a, a dirty word because it's associated with um, uh, appeasement towards the uh, rise of fascism, uh, particularly in Germany. Um, but in a sense, that's what Britain did. I mean, Britain sort of got out of the way while uh, America rose. Um, now, I'm not suggesting that the rest of the world gets out of the way while China rises, because I don't think we're moving, I, I wouldn't advise that anyway, but I don't think, we're, and neither are we moving to a, a world where China will be, you know, such a preeminent power. However, China clearly will be, I, th I think pretty clearly, will be um, a huge economy quite soon, quite possibly a, a bigger economy um, than the United States, albeit um, far poor, poorer per capita. Um, but that does, uh, that does mean that China will need more space and how to create that space without um, the uh, traditional methods, which unfortunately um, involve killing lots of people, um, I think is, you know, is the kind of great challenge um, uh, of the next uh, decades um, to come. I have no solutions. I, I pose it as a, uh, uh, as a question, really. Um, just two quick, uh, in a sense, related points, I suppose. Um, I mean, the security policy, you can make a few of the same um, points. Again, I think you know, one has to be careful um, that uh, you know, the tilt to Asia, when we talk about uh, um, you know, America, Japan, etc., that that not be seen as purely uh, Chinese containment. Um, um, you know, there's, I think we also need to look about what's actually happening. You know, there's been lots of talk about um, America's relationships with Australia, I'm talking about military relationships with the Philippines, where of course it retreated and now may be beginning to come back, um, and even with Vietnam. And I think this uh, is partly a reflection of kind of missteps in Chinese foreign policy where, you know, Deng Xiaoping's uh, dictum of sort of hiding, hiding one's light, perhaps uh, the light wasn't so carefully hidden in uh, 2009. Um, uh, and, so, and I think China is, you know, in a sense, suffering from that a little bit and has got America's uh, attention. However, when we come to uh, um, uh, the United States and Japan, um, the objective truth is not that America is becoming closer to Japan, no matter what people say, but actually that the relationship is, you know, it has some subterranean troubles. Uh, we can see that in the endless debate about Futenma um, uh, and now talk about Americans actually moving back uh, to Guam. So I just think there's an interesting dichotomy there between the idea of America, you know, moving um, ever closer and the reality, perhaps, we may be seeing the beginnings of it just moving slightly further away. I just, again, throw that out as a possibly interesting point. Um, and finally, uh, so where, where could these three um, regions sort of usefully um, cooperate. Well, one I would say is on the sort of whole financial architecture, um, where, as someone said in the conference, you know, this may be what our children blame us for, um, because uh, after the Great Lehman shock, there has really not been um, the radical uh, reshaping of regulations of of, uh, of the banks. And uh, you know, if I were a betting man, I would say that you know there'll be another Lehman shock come along. Um, in not too long, and you know, possibly with uh, um, enormous consequences. The environment, um, disaster preparedness, whereas, which is something that where Japan really has a lot to teach the world, and that's sort of soft power, as was pointed out to me earlier, that it possibly doesn't use as much. Japan can really teach an awful lot about how to mitigate the, uh, um, the problems of uh, disasters. And as we mentioned earlier, a point that you brought up there, um, you know, cyber, cyberspace. Anyway, thanks very much. Um, well, I'll just mention uh, one area where I think uh, cooperation among the three would be useful, um, and that's in helping other democracies, young democracies, uh, transitional democracies, figure out how to do things. You know, um, 60, 65 years ago, the, the, the American idea of democracy promotion was to send a four-star general uh, to an office uh, a few blocks away from here and write the Constitution. Um, hopefully, we've learned that that's not the ideal way to promote democracy. 
Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, as our interlocutor from the People's Republic of China said, there's no guarantee that uh, the story in the Middle East is going to turn out in a happy way. But how great it would be for the Arab world and for everybody else if, in fact, those countries could develop into uh, more prosperous, um, uh, sovereign democracies uh, that, that uh, could find their own way in the world. And the fact is that uh, you know, no democracy has all the answers, but we are so rich now in democracies that have gone through transitions. You know, maybe the most useful lessons for Egypt will come from Indonesia or Turkey, and the most useful lessons for Burma might come from South Africa, where you had something like a one-party state voluntarily giving up power. So I think the, to the extent that uh, the established democracies can enable that kind of assistance on very technical issues like, you know, how do you develop libel law that protects freedom of the press uh, while still protecting the rights of individuals? How do you build a party? How do you uh, have honest registration? Those would be very useful, practical things that, that uh, the three members of this uh, panel, of the, uh, these, the advanced democracies could bring to the world. どうもありがとうございました。大変あの素晴らしいまとめをいただいたと思います。ちょうどお時間もいっぱいになってしまいました。あのこういうふうにまあちょうど今ぐらいからあのもう一つテーマでもやれば議論が盛り上がりそうなところで終わってしまうのは大変残念なんですけれども、え最後にもう一度あの五人のパネリストに大きな拍手をいただければ幸いでございます。今日はどうもありがとうございました。<笑>